When you think of the Mount Rushmore of lemons, and by lemons we mean bad cars, not just 24 hours of lemons, or the coffee table book of the worst cars ever built, the Pinto will inevitably be included. But is it deserved? Well, it kinda is. Pinto fans will be quick to tell you that the whole exploding thing was blown out of proportion. And I suppose that's somewhat debatable. Maybe the Pinto wasn't that much worse than its contemporaries. At the same time, they didn't not explode. The main issue was that Ford was actually being cheap about a potential problem and how to fix it, then covering up their knowledge of said problem. So the main issue wasn't the actual problem with the car, it was how a giant corporation didn't act in the welfare of the people who were buying their product. Pretty rare thing, really. An industrial accident in the frantic run-up to Christmas at this Amazon fulfillment center in New Jersey. If Enron executives continue to refuse to answer the committee's questions voluntarily. A San Francisco jury has ruled in favor of a man who filed a claim against Monsanto. BP executives lied about the scale of the spill from the very beginning. Rampant corporate greed and exploding into fireballs aside, the Pinto isn't really a terrible car. Compared to its fellow Mount Rushmore resident, the Chevy Vega, the Pinto is downright decent. It's especially decent for lemons racing. It's cheap, parts are cheap, they're reliable, they're reasonably lightweight and can be made to handle good, and most importantly, lemons judges will go easy on you. The biggest Pinto asset, I would say, is its four-cylinder engine. In one form or another, this engine was in production from 1970 all the way to 2001. It stuck around long enough to get the nickname Pinto Motor, and in gearhead circles, that's taken away a lot of the stigma of the Pinto name. There's a bunch of versions of this engine, including a Cosworth-tuned turbocharged version, but the most common one you're going to find in the U.S. is a single overhead cam 2.3 liter, a non-turbo, usually called the Lima motor, not Lima because it was built in Lima, Ohio. And that's what this group, Team Skid Steer, has in their Lemons Pinto, except this isn't a Pinto at all. That's right, it's actually a Mercury Bobcat, which is the faster version. That's right, it's a Mercury Bobcat, which is actually the upmarket version. That's right, it's the Mercury Bobcat, which is actually different. Team Captain Greg had never even heard of a Bobcat when he started shopping for Lemons cars, so obviously he had to have one. And being a Mercury Bobcat, the team's first theme was a Skid Steer Bobcat tractor, hence the name Team Skid Steer. Really, the only differences between a Pinto and a Bobcat are entirely cosmetic, but here at Lemons, where there's a world of difference in minutia that is embraced, the much lesser known Bobcat is the clear choice to have. So Skid Steer has this Bobcat. Really, they've had two Bobcats because obviously once you max out the R&D and potential on the first one, you have to build version 2.0 from the ground up to maximize all of the technological advancements. Uh, Bobcat 2.0 is a 79 Bobcat with the aforementioned 2.3 liter Lima motor, a Holley 350 two barrel carb on a hand ported intake from a later fuel injected version of the engine, and it's got a T5 manual transmission which sends power to an 8 inch rear that they pulled out of a much awesome Ford Pinto wagon. This setup is not powerful. The team estimates it makes eh, maybe 115 horsepower at the crank, but most importantly, it's always made it onto the trailer at the end of a Lemons weekend under its own power. With only about 2,500 pounds to deal with, the team makes up for the lack of power with good brakes and handling, which we've seen in Lemons makes way more difference than adding horsepower. The suspension is mostly stock. It's got stiffer coil springs and a larger sway bar up front, but the big improvement is the brakes. It's got 11 inch rotors at all four corners with GM calipers. Wheels are 15 by seven, 15 by eight torque thrust, staggered setup. According to the team captain, Greg, the car is gutless down the straightaway, but it shines in the corners and has brakes for days. That's been a good enough setup to win an index of affluency, our top prize, at Autobahn, and they also won a Class C trophy at Road America, obviously against cars with a lot more power than they have. Okay, so the formula here is pretty simple. Find an unloved model, 
but with reliable components, pick the weirdest available variant if there is one and you can find it, and then race it. Team Skid Steer plans to keep racing this thing going forward, and actually they're thinking of upgrading to the 3.8 liter Essex V6 from Ford. So they'll be removing far and away the best part of a Pinto slash Bobcat? Well, yeah.